Hello everyone. My name is uh, Kalu Suvelingam. I'm a principal engineer at uh, Intuit. I'm going to talk about uh, data governance and compliance initiatives that we have done in Intuit and the learnings from it. So the agenda for this uh, discussion is, I'll start with quickly introducing about what we are doing in Intuit. And I will also quickly talk about the data privacy aspect, uh, what we are trying to solve. And I'll go through a high level design approach, what we have used. And in that design, what are the challenges that we went through? And we can now finally a Q&A. I'll start with the uh, introduction about Intuit. So Intuit is primarily into a uh, financial domain, provides multiple product lines. These are some of the key products that Intuit provides. The number one product Intuit provides is a TurboTax, which provides a tax automation to our, our customers. The second product that is shown here is the cookbooks. Uh, which provides the accounting automations uh, to our customers. And the third product is uh, Mint, which provides a personal finance management for our customers. And there are other products. I'll you know keep this uh, short. <clears throat> now, in all of these products, Intuit uses uh, key financial information about our customers. And recently, we have seen that there are a number of countries have introduced regulations, which provides an increased rights to the customers. And that's the topic about data governance and privacy. Now, these are the two most important regulations that started this journey. Number one is uh, GDPR, which is Global Data Protection Regulation, uh, which was uh, started by European uh, countries. So this provides the data privacy rights to the customer, customers of European uh, countries. Similarly, a law called CCPA was introduced in California that provided an increased rights to the Californian customers. Uh, into it being one of the uh, stu stewards of uh, you know regulations, um, you know we decided to support uh, these regulations across uh, all the regions where we operate. So what does this mean for us? There are two kinds of requests that Intuit has to enable in order to comply with these uh, regulations. Number one is uh, right to access uh, information. So what does this mean? This means that uh, Intuit needs to enable customers to be able to know what Intuit knows about them. So this might mean that the data that we know about them are the documents or any other information that we have collected through the third party. And how is this delivered to our customers? These informations are collected across different places and made in a simple archive so that you know, we can provide this information uh, uh, to the customers in an easy, easily consumable form. And we have to do it in time-bound man man manner so that we comply with this uh, regulations. The second rights that is provided by this regulation is uh, delete the right to delete request. Customers can request to delete all of all or partial of their information uh, from the companies, in this case, into it. And customer can also selectively choose what offering information that they wanted to delete. And again, even this request have to be uh, fulfilled in a specific uh, time frame. <clears throat> so how did we went about solving this problem? So this diagram shows a very high level uh, architecture about uh, the approach that you have uh, used for solving this problem. There are four components in this flow. The first component is the request manager. So this manages the request that comes from our customers to perform either of these operations. Now, when the manager receives this request, it employs a queue or a topic where this information is published. <clears throat> and then this is the second component. The third component in the flow is the data manager, what we call it as a data manager. So uh, there are multiple of these data managers are implied. Uh, since there are many domains uh, within this uh, personal finance product that you know, handles the data of our customers. And individual domains uh, do keep a data manager so that they can focus on their uh, work. The fourth component is a document management platform. These individual data managers as they collect the data they publish the data to the central uh, doc management platform so that this information can be archived and provided to the customer in the case of an access request. Now, in the case of a delete request, the same flow happens from the request managers to the queue to the data manager, and the data managers in turn connect with their individual services for which you know, they are responsible for and perform the delete operations. So this is the high level you know, flow involved in solving this uh, data privacy problem. Now, what are the top challenges that we went through? Uh, this slide shows the you know, top five challenges that we went through. 
the first one is uh, competing compliance regulations so since we are in the financial industry uh, it is not the uh, data privacy is not the only regulation that we have to uh, comply with there are uh, different kinds of regulations under which you know our company has to go through now sometimes these regulations are uh, competing with each other we will go into a little bit detail on as we go into the uh, details of this the second one is as we have seen that there are a number of uh, uh, systems involved in solving this problem so we have to make sure that the status of this request is uh, you know handled in a distributed manner and how do we do that is the second second challenge that we went through the third challenge that we went through is we employed a uh, message bus and message queues for solving this problem now these message queue architectures required you know specific challenges in terms of how do we scale for the request you know, that is uh, being provided to us so again we'll go into the detail as we go through the slides the fourth one is how do we organize the content from a different data managers so that we provide uh, usable uh, information to the customer the last one is uh, resumable offline processing now you can imagine that there are a number of data managers that provides this information and this information have to be um, you know processed uh, in offline to produce a single archive while we are producing a single archive there could be any problems that we can uh, run into it could be a, an intermittent network problem in such cases we want to make sure that the processing is resumed from the place where it, it's left so that's the first problem you know that we faced let's go deep dive into each of these problems the first one is uh, competing compliance regulations so in in the case of a uh, uh, ccpa customer can request uh, uh, he has a right to request to delete the data now let's suppose if the customer has a cookbus capital account now cookbus capital is the one that process loans for our small business companies now when they process the loans they use certain documents and data in order to process that loan now cookbus capital uh, has to adhere to ccpa regulations as well as it also has to adhere to other financial regulations in this case consumer financial protection bureau's record returns and regulations so any loan that is provided uh, where the loan was provided using some of the data and the documents that are provided by the customer these supporting information have to be kept for certain duration of the time now in this case there is one regulation that requests us to delete the information another one requests us to keep this data so we needed to have special handling the way we have done that is we have to keep each data element and the document where we have to keep an attribute that can let us know whether this data is required to be kept for another compliance or not and when the ccpa request comes in uh, the cookbooks uh, capital in this case offering would request to delete that information before we delete the data we need to make sure that we have to check whether there is any other compliance for which this data is used if so we can keep that data uh, for you know till the compliance requires that data for it the second one is uh, distributed status tracking um, so the as we have seen in the architecture the delete and access request spans across multiple domains and each domain in into it contains multiple services the service itself in order to delete the data it might require longer time than a time out that can happen you know when we make a, an http call so what 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 that service does is typically it makes an asynchronous processing in order to fulfill this delete request so when it does an asynchronous processing it has to return the status back to the caller in this case caller will be a domain data manager so the domain data manager has to orchestrate between multiple services for which it is responsible and consolidate the status uh, back into the the overall orchestrator who calls this domain data manager itself and the overall data overall orchestrator has to collaborate with 100 different uh, 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 data managers to track the overall request status so there is multiple you know places where we needed to make this uh, status tracking available so we have built you know for infrastructure in a place that where we can kind of you know keep track of the status to fulfill the complete request for the customer the third one is specifically around the message distribution and scalability we leverage active mq in order to process this uh, work uh, work order request so when the work order comes in they come into a topic or a queue and they stay uh, in the topic now this topic is supported by a distributed set of brokers so here in this case you know there are three brokers you know that uh, solves uh, that handles this processing 
Now, in the case of a distributed broker architecture, what happens to the queue sits in each of these processors. Now, the consumers who are connected to the, uh, the topic or a queue are really connected to an individual brokers. Now, if suppose if a consumer connected to broker one is able to perform the operation very quickly, then the number of messages delivered to that broker's uh, part of queue or the topic becomes a lot, uh, you know, lot more faster and it accumulates more messages in the, uh, in, in the broker. Now, the other brokers, even though there may be consumers to work, they may not be able to perform their work because you know, they, you know, they don't have enough messages to process them. Now, what we have to do is we have to tune this whole system in a way that we compute the consumer's processing speed and you know, the amount of uh, messages that individual brokers can you know, bring, bring in so that we equally distribute these messages to all the consumers to, you know, to effectively process this uh, uh, request. The next problem is uh, how do we organize the content that we are going to provide to our customers? <clears throat> so you can imagine Intuit provides uh, multiple product line and each product line has multiple data managers and they all in turn have multiple services and all of them bring the data in certain formats and certain structures. Now, if we dump all of this data into an archive, it may not be very useful to the customer. So what we do is we organize the contents in uh, folders and subfolders. And within the folder where there is a data available, we also provide a readme file. This readme file provides the structure of the individual files content and how this data can be understood is explained in the readme file. So this way, it is easier for the consumer to be able to open, open his archive uh, and read through and understand you know, which place where his content is uh, uh, stored. The final learning that we went through is a resumable offline processing. Now, as we have seen, there are 100 different data managers uh, operating on a particular work order. Now, this work order might require you know, several offline processing within individual services. Assume this is one of the data managers that is performing an archival process of the, uh, you know, the files that is received. So in this case, it could have collected millions of files or thousands of files. Now, these thousands of files need to be archived in order to provide the single archive to the customer. Now, when we do that, you know, this typically takes a longer time. And during the execution of the process, it could happen that you know, there are you know, a network fault or infrastructure issues that causes this process to fail. Now, suppose if I'm processing like 100,000 files, and if my failure happens after the 50,000, and if I don't have a way to you know, start from where the failure happened, I will have to start from the uh, initial, uh, request, initial file itself. That means, again, I'll have to process the 100,000 files one more time. So in order to avoid this, the way we have done that is we extended the status tracking mechanisms, not only to the data managers, uh, to the services, to even the output records that these services have brought in. So we will be able to track each, each individual's files uh, status, whether it has been successfully archived or not. And based on that, when, you know, in case if we run into problems, when we have to restart, we start from the place you know, where we have left. So these are some of the key learnings that we went through while we were implementing the data governance at uh, Intuit. With this, our customers are able to uh, give requests to um, you know, access their data and also uh, delete their information successfully. Um, and you know this this uh, whole process uh, is uh, really liked by, liked by our customers. And you know it, typically we get uh, we get number of requests in a day. You know that we process through these uh, uh, systems. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was a very detailed and insightful uh, talk. Uh, so, are there any updates regarding uh, compliance and uh, you know the architecture that you've used at uh, Intuit um, in the past year or so? And Bishop, thank you for asking that uh, question. Um, you know, our the architecture you know that we have designed uh, you know a couple of years ago when the CCPA came into force uh, in California. Uh, that kind of you know. Uh, stabilized and is you know extensively used uh, you know beyond uh, CCPA as well you know we're able to extend that to multiple other compliance needs uh, AU CDR uh, you know uh, and GDPR and uh, other compliance needs right so there is not a you know major uh, you know changes from the architecture side uh, but essentially the same pattern is you know leveraged for multiple use cases.